So I guess there's been a lot of chatter about upcoming changes to Google's ranking signals in May of 2021. Hopefully you've heard about them by now. But Google is about to hit the big red button on a major change to how its index works with uh, the introduction of the Core Web Vitals ranking signal and the overall page experience signal. So how important is this change? Well, nobody really knows just yet, only time will tell. But certainly a lot of SEO experts and lots of e-commerce experts have been um, really getting worked up an awful lot about this since it was announced in November of 2020. And if you run a WooCommerce website, chances are pretty high that right now you're struggling about what do you need to do to A, make sure that you don't get penalized when Google switches uh, the signal on May, and B, hopefully what you can do to take advantage of it. So um, I thought I'd take some time uh, to go through this in today's video and look at how we can optimize a WooCommerce website for a number of different things. First and foremost, your Google Page Speed Insights score, which is something that a lot of e-commerce website owners struggle with. And by proxy also, what you can do to make sure that your Core Web Vital signal metrics are uh, tip top and really in a good place before May of 2021. So what are we gonna cover? Well, we'll have a quick look at what Core Web Vitals are and why I think they're actually a good thing. Uh, we're going to dismiss some common misconceptions that exist at the moment about the role the page builders play with Google PageSpeed Insights and Core Web Vitals. Um, I've seen lots of people uh, very recently talk about how they're switching away from Elementor, we're switching over to Gutenberg, despite possibly that being a slightly immature page building experience for some people. This is almost like arguing about politics and religion as to which page builder is the best. Uh, quite honestly, I think that there's a lot of good things happening with Gutenberg. There's some wonderful things happening with Elementor. I'm not going to tell you which uh, page builder to use. Uh, we can save that conversation for another day in another video. But certainly I'd like to dispel some common misconceptions about specifically Elementor and why it's not a barrier to getting, first of all, high Google PageSpeed Insight scores on mobile devices, 90, 95 plus. And we're gonna actually walk through an example of that. Um, and we're gonna go take you through our Shoptimizer WooCommerce theme and go right through the process from a fresh installation in March of 2021, all the way through to a completed, fully optimized, core web vital friendly installation. So let's get on with it. Oh, of course, I'm Colin from Commerce Gurus, makers of the Shoptimizer WooCommerce theme. And if you're new here, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on how to make your WooCommerce websites super fast. So we're gonna first start off with some quick information about what Core Web Vitals are. I'm referring to a search engine journal article here from last November of 2020, uh, where we actually, it's quite a good article, um, and it really kind of gets into the nitty gritty of three, this is really a holy trinity of signals for Core Web Vitals. First being largest contentful paint, and we're looking at trying to achieve a score of 2.5 seconds or less. This, in my opinion, is probably the hardest thing to achieve. And you'll see that as we walk through today's video. Second one is first input delay, which is the time it takes for the page to become interactive. And again, people sometimes get confused between first input delay and a time to interactive, but this is a reasonably new metric uh, that Google have settled on to, for Core Web Vitals. And again, we're looking at a quite an ambitious number of 100 milliseconds. And essentially what we're saying is it's the time it, blah, it's the time it takes for a page to become interactive. Uh, that, that means lots of different things, but in short is that you, you'll experience, you really know what TT, uh, first input delay is when you see a bad first input delay. So if you've ever been on your phone on a poor connection and you've waited for a page to load and the page is loaded, but you, you're trying to tap on something or you're trying to hit a button and you can't, that's where first input delay comes into play. So you want that to be as short as possible. And that last one, cumulative layout shift. And this one people struggle with for many years, but there's been a lot of work done recently, mainly around typography, which generally tends to be where the biggest issues happen with cumulative layout shift or CLS, as we sometimes refer to it. And we're looking at an idea measurement of less than 0 0.1. So again, we're gonna walk through that. I'm gonna show you how we can achieve that 
quite easily now and, and the ways in which you identify where your CLS issues might be uh, might be tripping you up. Um, so just even before we go in, so that's the three. Uh, if we look here, you'll see lots of articles coming from Search Engine Journal. Again, lots of SEOs talking about it. Some people making fairly monumental shifts about how they do things, but just a recent article that just came out uh, in the past week. It's early March of 2021 as I record this video. So there's an article here from John Muller, who's one of, um, Google's uh, in-house experts on all things and all changes to do with how search engine rankings happen in Google. And John actually in made a very interesting point in this particular article where John actually downplayed the role of uh, the ranking effect that Core Web Vitals are gonna, ha are gonna have. And I thought this was quite an interesting article because I do think that some SEOs and some um, e-commerce and and website design developers are are kind of getting uh over over egging and over over emphasizing how big of a change core wide by is going to be so it was nice to see john put a bit more um sobriety around the whole topic and you can see here so basically so, so just because your website is fast with regards to core vitals and some compared doesn't necessarily mean that come may all of a sudden you're going to jump to position number one in search results and i think that's a really important point to make you know uh relevance um, authority, all of the traditional fundamentals of, of what determines um, search engine ranking, they're not going away. So this is simply another factor and it may get more important over time, but you know, the sky isn't gonna fall come May of 2021. This is the start of an introduction of a new factor. And I'm sure as Google would be a pain to, to tell people, core web vitals are not a new thing. They've been around for quite some time and they are, ever changing you know we see changes happening with how core web vitals are figured out all the time specifically coming from google's lighthouse um, uh, measurement protocols and there's been changes to those even as recent as last week so you know this won't be just do something now and expect you know either uh <laughs> to suddenly start outranking your competitors that you may have struggled with fears that's not going to happen but nevertheless, it is a change, it's a new signal, and it's important that we do take it seriously. But, you know, at the end of the day, it is only one additional ranking factor. So let's get on with our installation of our theme. So what I've done is I have set up a new, uh, a new WordPress installation on Cloudways. And we've covered Cloudways a few times in some of our uh, some of our videos. I did record a, a, a quite a long uh, tutorial on how to install WooCommerce, uh, which was part one of a series that unfortunately I never finished. Uh, it's almost two years ago now, but rest assured, I have uh, great plans to make uh, subsequent follow-up videos. I'll put a link in the description below. But for now, if you need to install uh, WooCommerce or get set up, Cloudway is a great place to start. And you'll see here, I've just installed and set up a very simple vanilla WordPress uh, uh, installation. So if we go back into the dashboard here, uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually just install and upload our Shoptimizer WooCommerce theme. So if you, uh, have not seen our Shoptimizer WooCommerce theme before, I will also put a link in the description below, but I'm going to assume for the purpose of this video, you know all about our wonderful speed optimized, SEO conversion optimized uh, WooCommerce theme. So let's get stuck in and install Shoptimizer. So we hit the welcome screen. The very first thing we wanna do is just install our plugins. There's only a few of them only takes a moment to do this, which is why I'll do it with you right here now. And we just activate, oop, uh, activate here. Return to the dashboard. So you can see before I started uh, setting up, uh, before I started this video, all I did was install uh, a fresh WordPress installation. I've not done any configuration. I've not added any products. Uh, yeah, sorry, I installed at WordPress and I also installed the WooCommerce plugin, but that was it. 
So it was a fresh, completely stock installation. And I've just now added Shoptimizer theme and installed its uh, recommended plugins and required plugins. Next, we import our demo data, which you can see from appearance and import demo data. And it shouldn't take us too much longer to complete. And right now what's happening is it's installing a series of products, blog posts, everything you need to just get set up and running with Choptimizer. So it's done. And now if we head back over to the front end, you'll see we have now got our menu, etc. Now there's a few other things we need to do with a fresh installation of Shoptimizer. Uh, which we're going to just quickly do from here in Elementor. We're going to switch off default colors and fonts in Elementor. There's no need for them. Okay. And that should, let me see if they come back. Which is perfect. And one last thing we want to do here in Elementor itself is, uh, so while we've switched off the fonts within Elementor settings, should always go in here as well and just set the typography here back to be the system fonts. And that will allow, uh, let's go right up the very top here to default. And we'll do the same here. Default. And did I do accent? No, I did not. Let's do that quickly now. I think that's everybody. Yep, and hit update. Okay, it's back to the editor. Okay, so the other thing I wanna do very quickly is just go back in and add a logo. So you'll want to add your logo. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to re-add the Shoptimizer logo. Uh, site identity, select logo. I'll grab it from our folder here. I'll skip cropping because it's already cropped. I'll select, I'll skip the cropping. And that just applies the Shoptimizer logo. So let's have a look now and see how we're looking. Okay, perfect. So we've got ourselves our basic Shoptimizer installation up and running very quickly. So you'll see over in our installation guide for Shoptimizer, I've covered just very quickly uh, some of the key steps there in the guide. Then you'll see here I've skipped just adding Sorry, not skip the demo content, but just setting the menu and stuff like that. Let's just go quickly there and check that again. Uh, back into menus. Should be already set by the installer. Yes, that one is set. And what else am I forgetting? Uh, you think I'd remember how to do this off by heart. I've done it enough times, so we've done this. Oh yeah, our settings should also be set, but they're in the guide just in case you decide to do money. Yeah, home and blog are set. Eh, let's switch it to eight as per the guide, why not? And then the other thing is just to set our thumbnail sizes from customize. WooCommerce, product images, and we're going for 800 and 300 and uncropped. 800, again, you wanna tweak these. These aren't critical for performance scores obviously you don't want these to be too big but these are just the, the recommended settings that we have here and that's it all done okay so first things first so we've installed Shoptimizer we've installed our demo data let's have a quick look and see how an out-of-the-box installation performs so we head over to Google page speed insights so you can see our main store demo here, shoptimizerdemo.commerceguru.com, currently has a mobile score of 95, a desktop score of 100. Okay, so it's obviously out of 100, can't get any better than 100 out of 100 on desktop. 95 out of 100 on, on mobile is pretty good. You'll see that from, uh, if you spend any time trying to do this yourself, you can see it's quite uncommon to have scores 
of 80 plus, 90 plus on mobile. More importantly here is we can see a couple of other important pieces of information, right? So um, if you're running this on your live site, you may not see field data. You'll definitely see lab data. So just to first of all explain lab data. So you, here you can see six numbers here, some of which directly align with Core Web Vitals. So we talked about uh, largest content will paint and we talked about cumulative layout shift. The one that's missing is first input delay because first input delay cannot be calculated in a lab environment. It's based on field data. Okay, so hence why some people get confused. It's time to interact with the same thing. No, it's not. Okay, or even say is total blocking time the same. No, it's not. So um, if your site doesn't get enough traffic, you may not see some field data. And you'll see here right now, even our main demo doesn't currently pass Core Web Vitals based on field data. And our lab data does. So what that tells you is two things. These are, this is done in real time. This is based on historical data stored. Uh, it's called Crux data and it's stored at, um, it's calculated, it's, it's picked up based on real users in the world. So we've done a, quite a few changes recently to our demo and it takes quite some time, it can take up to a month for those numbers to be reflected in your field data. So don't be disheartened or surprised if you see that your lab data looks wonderful, but your field data is still um, struggling. You can see here it's a 28 day collection period. Now, even having said that, you might wait a, a, a month and you might still, or even two months, and you might still be seeing that your lab scores are wonderful and your field data is not so wonderful. And that's because this is based on real user devices and this is based on emulated devices within Lighthouse itself, which is the tool, which is the, uh, as we're currently running is Lighthouse 7.1, which is throttled for mobile and all that kind of stuff, but it's still a simulated environment. This is based on real world data. Okay, so we would expect, given the changes we've done recently to our main demo, we'll expect these to all align, these to pass very, very soon. But you can see here right now, for the two figures that are calculated in real time, we're just on, on the margins here at 2.5 seconds for the largest content we'll paint. And our cumulative rate of shift is essentially residual. It's almost zero. And you can see for desktop, it's straight up zero. Large content, large content will paint is 0 0.6 seconds. But the key, it's to be honest with you, in, in 2021, it's quite easy to hit 100 out of 100 on desktop. So we tend to spend most of our time for focusing on, on, uh, on the mobile scores. So to get to PageSpeed Insights, just Google PageSpeed Insights, developers.google.com forward slash p forward slash speed slash page speed and then put your website in here, you get your number back. So let's just take our new temporary domain that's sitting on Cloudways and let's run it through. Let's do a brand new, uh, let's do a brand new test here. Now I'm not expecting this to hit uh, anywhere near the 90s for the moment because we haven't done any tuning for Core Web Vitals or PageSpeed Insights just yet. So let's see where we end up. Drum roll, 79, not too bad actually, hitting 80. That's pretty good out of the box. So that's a lot of Shoptimizer out of the box. It's heavily optimized for, um, for performance and for conversion, but specifically around performance, a lot of the style sheets are um, as light as possible. We don't use jQuery for basically anything in the theme anymore. Um, and we spend a lot of time tuning, you know, to ensure that those uh, assets and requests that are loaded on the page are as small as possible. So out of the box, we're doing pretty good straight away without any tuning whatsoever. So let's get back into um, WordPress and have a look at what else we need to do. So actually, before we just go back into WordPress, uh, one other thing I should have pointed out here. Um, so you can see here, uh, reduce, reduce initial server response time is one of our opportunities. Uh, that we're going to focus on first and foremost. And basically what's happened there is our time to first byte is quite long. It's 1.74 seconds. So uh, we have an easy way of fixing that within our WordPress installation, especially on Cloudways, which I'm going to show you now momentarily. But before I do that, let me just scoot over here to web page test. If you don't know what web page test is, have a look at some of our other videos. Uh, but webpagetest.org is the URL you need to go to. You over there, Put your website URL in, Ch choose your data center. I'm based in Ireland, so I'm just testing from Ireland. Uh, however, the server where our website is hosted is based out of 
uh, the United States. So there is some latency. So it's a good test for users from this side of the pond. And you can see here, I'm going to test history and I'm just going to open up. Um, you can see here our waterfall. And again, we have lots of um, information on how to read and understand a website waterfall in our guide section, which I'll link to. Um, but you can see here very quickly, initially, you can see our response time, five to three milliseconds. It's actually quite a bit faster uh, than what Lighthouse detected. So one thing that you'll see all the time is just running the score once is never enough, right? So when you're doing any kind of test, it's important you do several rounds. There will be some latency between tests and, you know, especially if you're using caching plugins as well as another issue, you'll have to worry about the warm up of the cache. So you can see straight away score changes quite considerably there just from uh, from the first round of tests. So, yeah, be sure to do that um, and use web page tests. There's lots of others. GP, GT Metrics is another great tool it was updated quite recently. Um, it's quite, quite, uh, quite similar in many ways to um to web page mm -hmm. test in terms of what it does i do tend to prefer web page mm -hmm. test because it's I got a little bit more granularity uh it was recently taken over by a company called uh, catchpoint and patrick meenan who was formerly a google and facebook engineer who essentially used to run this from his basement for the longest time uh, has now moved over to catchpoint so a lot more investment being put into the product going forward which is awesome um but yes so the two two tools that i use and live in daily our PageSpeed Insights and web page tests. So let's just go back now into our WordPress site here. And what we want to do first and foremost is uh, enable Breeze, which is our page caching, caching solution that we're going to use. So, so Breeze is our caching plugin. Again, there's a ton of page caching plugins out there and Breeze does a lot more than just page caching. Um, but there's several major benefits to using Breeze if you're on Cloudways because it directly integrates with their various uh, server-based caching solutions, including Varnish, Nginx. It's pre-configured for WooCommerce, so you don't have to mess around with a lot of custom Nginx configurations for WooCommerce, etc. cetera. Um, I don't tend to use any of their other aspects to um, to Breeze itself, it does a lot of other things. Uh, not that there's anything necessarily wrong with them. It's just it's not it's not something uh, I depend on. I use some other plugins. We're going to look at here. So mainly the configuration for Breeze is pretty pretty standard. I've not changed anything in here. This is the out of box configuration for Breeze. So if you've installed a basic WordPress installation on Cloudways, chances are it will be active by default. If not, go ahead and activate it. And the stock settings are perfectly fine for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, you'll see uh, uh, Cloudways also installs a bot protection plugin. And what else? That was That's all the only other thing it, act, it, it, it activates. So I'm gonna leave that there. It's, yeah, it's good. It's a good plugin. And it doesn't have any performance implications. So yeah, so we can see basically, we've kind of jumped around here a bit, but our second test was based on Breeze being active and we immediately uh, see a difference in our scores just from having page caching. So the main thing that that influences it is that initial TTFB time type to first byte time, which we've seen previously was flagged here as an issue. It's no longer flagged as an issue. Now there's lots of other things flagged, which we're gonna work our way down through, but you can already see that um, our LTP time, three seconds is getting pretty good already. And we're gonna do some further work to improve that right now. So next on our list is to install a uh, plugin, another plugin called Flying Scripts. Mm, Flying Scripts. Again, it's a free plugin uh, by the wonderful, uh, I, I'm going to butcher his name, uh, but it's Gijo or Gijo Varghese, who runs a very popular. Facebook group called Do WP Speed Matters. A uh, wonderful place to get advice and help um, and guidance on anything to do with uh, uh, WordPress performance. I spent a lot of time over there, mainly lurking, but interacting the odd time. But it's a really, really good group and highly recommend everything by Gijo in terms of uh, both his plugins, uh, flying scripts, flying pages, flying press, which is a fully fledged um, uh, caching plugin in its own right. 
Um, but for the purpose of this guide, you know, see, I'm trying to focus on uh, any tools and plugins that are effectively free. Um, so I haven't recommended any commercial plugins thus far. So what we want to do with flying scripts is we want to pull in a list of scripts from a GitHub gist that I have here. So I'm going to pull them in and then explain what we're doing. So I'm going to add these scripts here. And again, these will be a link to the gist will be below. So what exactly is flying scripts doing? So we're putting in a list of script names here. It can be anything from just a fraction of the file name to the full file name. And what we're essentially doing here is delaying the loading of these JavaScript files and we're taking them out of the main thread. So what does that mean? So we'll go back in here to our waterfall. And let me just make sure I'm actually looking at the right waterfall. Bear with me one moment. So 302. Actually, we've not run 302 before, so let's do that right now. I thought I'd run 302. Must have not. Let's go back in and just run a fresh test for 302. And of course, we get stuck with our CAPTCHA. Yeah. Let that run. And while that's running, let me just go back briefly and explain what's happening. So if I go look at our front end again, and I open DevTools, which we've talked about before, so I won't go through it again. But if I just refresh, we see our waterfall here in the network tab. Okay. So you'll see that if I filter just by scripts, we're at 35 individual JavaScripts. Let's see as well, we have a bunch of CSS. So what's happening by default, many of these scripts are loaded in a blocking manner within WordPress and WooCommerce. And not only that, but they also occupy quite a bit of activity on the main thread in the browser. Okay, so one of the secrets or one of the real, I suppose, kind of hidden weapons of uh, improving your PageSpeed Insights scores and for, by, by proxy your core web vitals is to remove as much activity from the main browser thread as possible. So Flying Scripts is a key plugin that we use to not defer these JavaScripts, not make them asynchronous, to fully, fully delay them from being loaded completely until there's a user interaction on the site. So once we've set these, we switch our timer and we enable, now, when I go back to the website, let me just make sure we're on our job. So just watch the JavaScript number there again, right? So 35 JavaScripts. Let me just bring a bit more of the site visible. And now when I refresh, what you'll see is the number is less than 35. It's now 30. Now watch what happens when I move my cursor into the viewport. You'll see immediately that went from 30 to 35. Let me just show you that again, just in case you missed it. So I refresh all our 30 of our JavaScript. So let me just clear that out and watch. And here we go. So the user interaction there was me moving the mouse within the viewport. That triggered, it could be a tap event, could be a touch event. Basically any form of user interaction triggers those scripts to be loaded. So we're completely removing them from the main thread of the browser. You won't be able to do this for with every piece of JavaScript because some JavaScripts will break if they're not in the main thread. The, the browser may be, uh, and your website specifically you may be relying on a script to be loaded in a blocking manner. So you will need to experiment with this. The list of scripts that I've provided in the gist here, basically, we know these are all um, delay safe, so to speak, if that's an expression we can use here. And uh, they won't break, that won't trigger any console errors. But you may find on occasion that, for example, let's say we go back to our waterfall now, and we have a look here. You'll note that I've not, uh, I've not delayed a bunch of stuff, specifically around things like Elementor, waypoints, and things like that. And you'll find if you delay some of these, if you have artifacts on your page that depend on them, for example, if you had a slider here, which we hate sliders on home pages, but some people still like to uh, not take our advice and add sliders, or if you had some sort of fancy JavaScript interactions that you're pulling out of 
Elementor or Gutenberg or whatever page builder you use, you'll find if you delay anything on the page that's, that's needed in the main render event, you may see console errors, okay? You'll see a common one would pop in here, might be jQuery is undefined or sticky.js is undefined because it's, it's trying to load a script that's been delayed. So you gotta be careful with what scripts you delay. But essentially the list I'm giving you here, is apps, if you're using Shoptimizer, if you're familiar with Shoptimizer at all, these scripts are all delay friendly. Um, Wishlist.js is, is, a, is a JavaScript that's loaded by our Commerce Kit uh, plugin. It has no jQuery dependencies, completely uh, vanilla JS. Same with Ajax Search. Again, it's a script from Commerce Kit for the main Ajax, that's uh, Ajax Search. Um, completely uh, uh, completely uh, vanilla JS doesn't depend on a jQuery. And while some of these do have some jQuery, they're not loaded in a blocking manner, so it's safe to uh, delay them. So the net effect of that is quite significant. So if I hit, um, so we've made a change and I've saved it. The first thing we want to do is purge our breeze cache, which will clear the browser cache completely. And um, let me just check and make sure now. So I'm obviously logged in, but I'm just going to go to an incognito window. And let's be sure that our cache is warmed up. Yeah, you can see the number changed on user interaction there again. You'll see the number is, is a lot lower here because I'm logged out of WordPress. So a lot of WordPress JavaScripts aren't being loaded, obviously, which is even better. So now if I go back and run a fresh test. Yeah, let's see what happens. And just while that one's running, uh, this was, uh, let's see, let's go back in here and kick off another web page test. Okay, so you'll see yeah, we've dropped a little bit. Again, don't don't fret when you see the number change. Oh, it was 92 a minute ago, now it's 87. That's gonna happen. That's just part of life. You've gotta run multiple test rounds and take essentially run three or four or five or 10 and take take the median or the average number. It's the best way of, of determining your true score because the, these will fluctuate all the time. And you can see our, our web page test now is ran and we see our request number. Let's go back and check the history of that now. So there's the first 302 test we ran. We could see there was 43 requests, fully loaded with 45. So now it's dropped uh, from the original. Oh, it's actually increased. Why is it increased? Let's have a look at that here and see what's changed. I suspect it's to do with, did we install something else? 43, ah, it didn't pick up the, um, we ran this test before the cache was cleared. So we'll need to run that again. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. Um, but you can see for sure that it's changed in the browser. So uh, rather than me running it again, let's just go back here. And our incognito. I'll just run JavaScripts. Yeah, 39 total. And I'm going to pop over. You can see that increases by five. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, again, it's not quite hit the 92, but I'm not too worried about that right now. All right. So, you'll see, you know, it's not an exact science when it comes to running. Um, uh, when it comes to you, know, you see, look, it's ninety-five, so it is hopping around the place based on some, uh, based on some latency and based on the test conditions that exist within Lighthouse at that given time. All right, so you do need to do multiple rounds of tests. Now, so we're in pretty good nick already. Right, LTP is still a little bit too high. We'll deal with that very, very shortly. So next on our list is what have we got next? We want to do. Um, let me see here now, bear with me one second. Ah, yes, okay, so we next wanna do acid cleanup. So another free plugin. And these are all plugins that are used by WordPress web performance experts. If you hire somebody to do work on speeding up your WordPress or WooCommerce website, these are all the tools that uh, we use. 
Acid Clean in particular is a wonderful plugin. I love it. It's incredibly well made. Uh, it does a lot of stuff. There are simpler versions. Perf Matters also does this quite well. I've just used Asset Cleanup pretty much since the day it was launched. And what it does, if I go back now to edit my homepage, and while this is mainly built with Elementor, I'm not going to open the Elementor edit view yet. I'm just going to scroll down. You'll see the first thing that happens now underneath the main edit screen is Asset Cleanup injects itself in here. And what it does very cleverly is it loads the page, the front end view of the page, picks out all the requests that are loaded, CSS and JavaScript files, and then loads them here for us. And you're like this wall of options. What are we doing here? Well, what this view allows us to do is to dequeue individual requests on the page that we don't need. So we as developers and designers usually use some WordPress functions to dequeue assets on the page, which can be tricky enough to do and etc. So this basically gives you, the user, the same ability to do that. So you, again, you need to be careful. You can't just go in here and start unloading everything because your, your website will break pretty quickly if you do that. But plugin developers and designers are um, plugin and theme developers and designers historically haven't been very good at conditionally loading requests on the page, which is why you'll find, for example, um, you know, we don't have too many plugins installed here at the moment, but let's just scroll down and see. Again, Elementor is probably the guiltiest party we have right now. There's so many individual JavaScripts and CSS files uh, loaded by Elementor itself. But again, let's see where we get speed-wise without touching them. I'm going to DQ WC block style because I'm not using any of the new WooCommerce blocks right now on this website. If you were using them, you shouldn't DQ this, but it's safe for me because I'm not using any. Same here, I'm gonna get rid of these two files. Um, cart fragments we're gonna leave in place because we're already delaying it via flying scripts. Shop optimizer, we're okay because the a lot of these files are already minified. Uh, Rev Vulcans, we're gonna get rid of shortly separately. Um, and there's a big one we're going to do from the main settings tab. Is there anything else? I'm trying to think now. Was there anything else we can remove? So we're actually doing pretty, we're pretty clean on this installation right now. Um, but for example, you might come in here and you might discover you're using a MailChimp plugin or you're using WP Forms or something like that. And you may discover that there's JavaScripts here from those plugins loaded here. Um, if you're not using any of the plugin features on the page in question, unload them. Clear your cache, check and see if you have any console errors on your page. If you don't, it's safe. If you do, un um, deactivate the unloading action and move on to the next one. It's really a trial and error process, folks. But the fact that you can do that from within here is great. Okay, so you can do this for every single page. I'm just doing it for the home page. You can do it globally as well. Um, but for now, I'm just going to do uh, these few changes on this page here. And we just hit update. And there's one other change I'm going to make in Asset Cleanup itself. If I go back to bulk changes here, and you will see, maybe it's not bulk, but actually it's in settings. Um, and we go down to site wide common unloads. Yes. And we want to get rid of Gutenberg here. Again, we're not using Gutenberg on this particular installation. We're going to concentrate on Elementor. So we're going to unload uh, the main style that may not see this. And there was actually a pretty recent change to Gutenberg, which has made this, uh, the way this gets loaded a lot cleverer. But for now, we're not using Gutenberg, so we're just gonna get rid of um, that CSS file. There's no need for it. Okay, so that's gone. We have two unloads. Let's purge all cache. And let's go back. Actually, before we do that, let's just warm the cache up. Oh man, I should really have that open all the time in a separate tab, a separate incognito window, shouldn't I? But anyway, no heart, no issue with you seeing it. Let's see what that does now. And I'll kick off another web page test. So you can see it's important as you go to always, you know, have cause effect. Do an action, run your page speed tests, run GPSI, run web page tests, see what, do a few rounds of it. It can, it can take some time. It can slow you down, but it's well worth doing this so you can see um, what impact your changes have. And again, don't be surprised if you see these hop around the place. 
if if you're seeing a swing of like between five and ten, I wouldn't worry too much about that initially. If you see a change you've made, and this drops to like thirty, you know you've done something wrong, and you should reverse it. Um, but if you see small swings, they're insignificant at the moment. They may be significant a little bit later as we get into the managing returns on the tasks that we're doing. So let's see what is next. So we've taken out our any CSS and JavaScript that we thought was safe. Okay, so one final free plugin we're gonna install is Auto Optimize. Auto Optimize is another of my favorite web performance plugins for WordPress. Um, wonderful, wonderful plugin, very regularly updated. New features being added all the time. A deceptively simple interface for what is quite a sophisticated plugin underneath the hood. Um, again, we have used Auto Optimized heavily uh, for the last few years as part of our installation guides. And I've in this installation guide, we've got a slightly different approach to Auto Optimize, just given some of the changes that have happened with Core Web Vitals. Um, we'll just say, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. So we're not going to optimize any JavaScript, which is a change from our previous guides, if you've seen any of our previous installation guides. And that's mainly down to a few different things. But a big change that happened only actually last week was Google PageSpeed Insights actually had a fairly significant bug to do with uh, HTTP 2 and HTTP 1.1. So PageSpeed Insights, everyone assumed for the longest time that PageSpeed Insights ran uh, with HTTP 2. It didn't. It was all a bug, a uh, bug that was only fixed. It was running up, it was running um, a HTTP 1.1 client up until about a week ago. And one of the pieces of advice that, uh, you know, web performance experts have made for years was, look, there's no need to concatenate minif minify CSS anymore. It's not required. There's no benefit from it in the HTTP, HTTP 2 world. And that was absolutely correct. However, PageSpeed Insights, we found in our tests, would always penalize you for not concatenating and minifying assets. And I'm convinced that that's down to the fact that it was running HTTP 1.1. So we've even seen just what our most recent changes in this guide here is that no, you no longer need to optimize your JavaScripts in the way we would have done in previous guides. So that's, that's a significant departure. Now, I still see benefits from optimizing CSS and I'm gonna explain here what we're doing. So we're aggregating all files. We're gonna aggregate inline as well. We're not going to enable critical CSS or anything like that for the moment. In fact, we may never do it. So you'll see later how far we get without doing that and what the issues might be. And that's, let me see what else we want to do. That's all that's there. And over here, we're going to enable lazy loading of images and we're going to exclude our, uh, hold on, I'm going to exclude the logo. Uh, no, I want to copy the image name. So what we're doing here is we're enabling lazy loading, which basically will remove images from, it's probably in our, oh, sorry, bear with me now. It's probably listed, uh, may not be listed here actually. No, yeah, here. So some issues around image sizing and you'll so sometimes see it here where there's, um, you'll see uh, off-screen images shouldn't be loaded as the opportunity to fix. Now we're in good shape already, but it's nevertheless, we'll go ahead and do it. So lazy loading is not a good idea for any images that appear above the fold on your page. So you never want to lazy load, um, for example, here the logo of the hero image. Um, now I've actually found, believe it or not, that lazy loading this hero image actually improved our LTP score. So um, that goes against conventional advice or, or latest emerging advice, which is to not lazy load any of these images above the fold, which I thought was interesting. But certainly the logo, you don't want to lazy load because it's so early in the render on the screen. To rely on JavaScript to load that logo would be daft, okay? So we're going to, um, get rid of the guy there. We're going to exclude the logo. And you simply just take the name. It doesn't need to be the full path. In this case, just the name. Um, auto optimize also lets you do this clever thing, which starts from zero. Obviously, letting, if you wanted, if you were on your website, for example, across all pages, you could just set this to be one, which we ignore the logo. Now, I've not done that in this case, so I just wanted to show you what naming uh, using the uh, exclusions by name looks like. But equally, you could just change this to one, or for example, if the first two images you didn't want them to be lazy, just set that to two and I'll exclude them. 
Uh, so hit save changes. And I'm gonna jump ahead here and do one other thing. So we're not using Google Fonts at the moment. So removing emojis, we absolutely want to do that. And we're not gonna pre-connect to anything right now. We will preload the um, the logo, uh, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. Um, there's one other thing I wanna do before we do that, which is I want to install Jetpack. <gasps> Jetpack. I hear the shrieks of despair at the suggestion of installing Jetpack. So Jetpack is a plugin that you either loathe or eh, like might be too strong a word, but tolerate is maybe a better word. Um, I think it's a bit unfair. Jetpack is, you know, it's it's a it's a plugin that us in the development community in WordPress love to hate for lots of different reasons. Some of them historical, some of them are still relevant. But one thing it does very, very good, and what I'm recommending in this guide is it's free CDN. Okay, so I'm setting up Jetpack here purely for the purpose of using it for its free image CDN. So if you've looked at image optimization, again, it's coming up uh, probably here, right? So there's issues here around, um, okay, this is specifically with just the expires set to 30 days, but quite frequently you'll see issues here about the format of your image. Um, you need to use a more modern format or you might see warnings just about, yeah, properly sizing. Um, or deferring off screen, as I've mentioned before, lots of different um, warnings to do with images. So you either end up using a free plugin where you spend a ton of time resizing your images, there's Smush, there's a ton of plugins um, that, that specialize in that. There's the EU plugin that's been around for years, which is still works great. We've mentioned it in a few of our guides in the past. Or you offload image optimization to a third party service. And there's lots of those. There's Cloudflare, there's Optimal, there's Imagify, there's um, Short Pixel. There's tons of third-party services. Most of them, almost all of them, come with a cost. So, and that's fine. They're commercial services. In fact, on our own uh, demo, we use Cloudflare and we use the business plan, which provides a service called Polish, which I highly recommend. Um, in fact, if I was to pick one of the commercial services, the one I would pick and rec recommend strongly because you're getting a lot of other value from Cloudflare, not just image optimization. Uh, there's also BunnyNet, which is a great CDN. So look, you've got loads of them, but Jetpack and its image CDN essentially is available free of charge. Um, of course, you've got to live with Jetpack. But what I do is I go straight in here to modules and I just switch them all off which most people don't even realize is the thing you can do in Jetpack, it's down at the bottom here. Switch them all off and then I'll go back in to performance. Again, this is flagging because I'm on a staging server. You won't see this on your, on your live machine. And I enable the site accelerator and I'm not gonna enable the Jetpack lazy loader. I prefer the auto optimized one, quite frankly. They both use a derivative of a system called lazy sizes, but I just have a slight preference for how all optimize integrates within uh, WordPress. So that is Jetpack setup. Um, oh, actually, before I clear our caches, let me just go back and edit the homepage again because I'm pretty sure that Jetpack will have added a CSS file here, which we don't need. So let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Okay, and maybe just control F and here we go. So we need Photon because Photon's used for the image CDN, but we don't need jetpack.css. Again, if you were using some of the tiled image galleries in Jetpack, you don't want to do this, but I know for a fact we're safe. Just getting rid of that CSS file. And now what I want to do is I want to just purge our auto optimize cache. I'll go ahead and purge Breeze as well when I'm at it. And I'll just warm up the cache again just by loading the website in a incognito window. Okay, so we're warming up our uh, our front end after making changes to it in an incognito session. And you'll see now the initial page load can sometimes take 
a if you're on a low spec machine which we are on this cloudways machine it's only a five dollar a month machine you can see the first session is always slow while the cache is warmed up and now the second uh second load is much faster you can see here ttfb was 112 milliseconds which is pretty good as good as you can hope for really and then you can see now the cache has been hit okay so let's go back rerun our test see where we're at page speed insights and web page test oh man we are really getting what we're we looking for today parking meters here we go i bet you i've missed one. Oh, all right first time all right so now while that's running we can see what are we at now 94 which is good and we are at we're starting to hit some real magic here so we're under the magic 2.5 for our largest contentful paint we are yeah as good as we're going to get really on the cls as 0 0.001 and yeah these are i'm pretty happy with these scores now we're at 100 still on desktop which one would expect and let's just see what our waterfall is looking like right now as well uh do, 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 do. yeah not too bad so you'll see from our previous guides, you may remember, or if you've been following previously, about adding pre-connects for um, third-party domains. Jetpack actually does add DNS prefetches now for for anything that any of the external domains that it loads. So you don't need to add those uh, pre-connects anymore. Well, you could still add the pre-connects; they're prefetches, which is slightly different. But you can see the impact here, the DNS prefetch. I don't think you need to do it. To be honest. If there was a lot more assets, we might do it. But in most cases, DNS prefetch is probably the safest choice unless you've got some really, really high priority assets that are being loaded and need to be, that you absolutely know you'll be connecting to. Um, you could use the pre-connects. But for the moment, I think it's safe to ignore. And you can see it's not really having a much of a, an impact either way by not using pre-connects. Um, now, there's one other WAF file here I want to get rid of, which is the Revelicans uh, WAF file, which is loaded by Shoptimizer and used to be used heavily for um, for some font icons that we use on the site for things like the account help. Now, the good news is it's no longer needed. It's kept there for backwards compatibility and it's very easy to remove it. So you go back into Appearance, Customize, and then we go to General and Speed Settings and we want to load revelicans switch to no publish and all you need to do then is make sure and let's just go up here oh man sorry one second let's go back to so what we want to do is clear clear and let's just make sure that that change hasn't impacted our our icons and it won't because you'll see these are now svgs as per our guide let's just make sure we're loading the svg version yep which is cool so that will get rid of that i mean we could just run this again you may find sometimes if you pick a data center web page to data center you may find that they're they can these can get backed up quite a lot um i'm getting incredibly lucky with our irish data center today it's uh responding to us almost instantaneously but that WAF file will have been hurting our largest uh contentful paint time because it's right up in the blocking manner and you can see our tests our times are coming right down now right so we're getting into pretty good shape now you can see that's gone out of the waterfall now <clears throat> okay so now we're up to 97 and we're at an LTP of 2.2 seconds. Okay. Total blocking time is now 90 milliseconds. Again, this will fluctuate, right? Don't just run it once and think, hey, it's great. This will drop again. 97 is exceptional, to be honest with you. It's, you know, it's as close to 100 as you're going to get without doing major breaking changes to WooCommerce stores. So typically how a lot of... Um, performance experts will go here is to you know either make 
run jQuery in an async manner or completely remove it. Now, unfortunately, there's just so much of WooCommerce that still depends on jQuery for key tasks and key events that you just can't do that just yet. I think we'll get there pretty soon, hopefully some stage later in 2021, but just WooCommerce itself still depends on jQuery for quite a lot of key events on the website, okay? So you will not be able to dequeue or delay jQuery or make it blocking without doing some serious other changes to your store. So, and again, is it worth it for the case of three percentage points or three or four or five, depending on where you're at? Probably not. So you're gonna to have to live with some of these guys, the jQuery that mean that JS will be there for as long as jQuery is loaded in a render blocking manner, which it probably will be. But that's, there's a couple of other small changes that we wanna do now. Um, so these guys are still being loaded from the main domain and we probably want to just aggregate our CSS. Uh, maybe not, but I'm just going to try it and see if it has any other benefit. We're doing, to be honest, we're doing pretty good now, right? We're pretty close to what I would consider best in class for an e-commerce, for a WooCommerce store for sure. Let's just go back and into auto-optimize now and tweak some additional settings. And again, you know, want to tweak these. Uh, let's try. I thought I had done that earlier. Maybe I didn't save it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, must have been in the other version, right? So, optimize our HTML. And we'll leave the stock. Install these. Let's just go back and see. Yeah, yeah we were testing the right one. Okay, so again, so we've cleared that, clear our breeze. Now this might actually lead to a decrease. So it's always good to test things that you may have made assumptions on that, that you think might improve things and find that they actually don't. Um, and that's okay. So again, you can see here, right? Well, has that really been a change? Probably not. Ah, I never wore my cash up. So you can see, the implications are the impact of not warming your cache, right? You can see there straight away, I know I didn't warm my cache because I've been warned about reducing the initial server response time. You can see it's quite long, 2.36 seconds alone. Now, if I run that again, it'll warm up the cache anyway, right? So um, I'm just gonna run another waterfall test here now as well, and see where that gets. Okay, so now we're up to 98, so just two points off. We're never going to get to 100 on mobile. Spoiler, folks, it's just not going to happen. Um, it's very, very, very difficult to hit 100 out of 100 on mobile for a WooCommerce store with a page builder. It's, it's, you know, it's not impossible, but it's tricky. And we're basically just trying to find, you know, um, the minimal number of steps here to get you into a pretty good place. This already has you better than 99.999% of your peers. Okay, um, and that was with, you know, not it wasn't that difficult to make those, uh, to make those changes. You know, a good solid theme. Um, you know, I'm gonna plug Shoptimizer at every opportunity we can. Um, good solid host, and yeah, really those steps that we've gone through now. What else? Let me see if there's anything else that we can do here from the magic bag of tricks. Uh, we've got the emojis we dealt with, lazy loading we've switched on, jetpack we've got. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see if we've got anything else for you. Oh yeah, there's one last thing, which may or may not, um, may or may not be something you wanna do, but I'll show it to you anyway. Okay, so there's one other major change happening with Shoptimizer in the near future. And it's to do with how typography is loaded. So, if you've ever been on an, a website and seen typography flash when you load it. So you can see there, right? As I load that screen, you can see one set of, uh, you can see a flash on the text. It's the easiest way of describing it. And it's quite visible on slow connections, right? So if I go into network here and I go on to a slow 3G connection, let me just move that down. And I go again, which is just emulating a very, very slow connection. You'll really notice it there now, right? So this is you on your subway or on your metro or your tube, and you're on a slow connection 
on an overworked uh, smartphone, you'll really start to notice things like this, right? Where your text hops. So now there's two schools of thought on this. Personally, I don't have a major issue with this because text replacement with, with web fonts, it's just one of those things. It's an aesthetic thing as opposed to a functional thing. However, it can in certain cases cause issues with cumulative layout shift if the font shift is sufficient enough to change the, um, the height of the page, which can be particularly important on smartphone devices, um, then that text issue could really be a problem for you, right? So again, you can see it there and it's not really changing the height of the block elements on the page, so it's probably okay. However, there is a solution to it and it is a beta feature that we have in, uh, implemented in um, Shoptimizer. So for now, what you need to do is you need to install a plugin called Custom Snippets. Which again, it's another wonderful plugin, which we've probably mentioned in past tutorials and videos, but it's a plugin just to run various different PHP snippets from within the editor here. So I just need to go and get the snippet for you now. Give me a moment and I will do that. So we have this running on our main demo right now. Uh, snippets here. Okay. Let's go back here. Add new. Shop optimizer typography 2.0 okay so it's just activate the filter we want to run it everywhere activate and now when I go back into the customizer you should see a new typography option reveal itself yes here so it switches off the old typography controls and loads a new typography uh, control. Now, very, very similar to the old one in terms of what you can do in here, slight layout differences, but very, very similar from, um, from the customizer's perspective. But behind the scenes, there's actually quite a lot going on. I'm just putting in a blank comment in here because um, I don't want to change any other settings in the customizer. So that just allows the publish button to become active. Actually, I could probably take it out straight away afterwards. The reason I'm just saving the customizer is I want the new typography controls to set themselves live on the site. What happens with typography 2.0? Why is it in beta and what are we doing with it? Uh, what are we doing with it? Is, um, let me just switch back to the desktop view and I'll go to the network and I'll do all and I'll load again. Now, so if I just make the network tab a little bigger, so you can see something has changed up here. You can see now we've got a number of different WAF files being loaded right at the very top of the page. And if I refresh again, and if I actually just make the, let's go back to the mobile view and I'll switch my network tab uh, where are we here? Yeah, slow. Let's go again. Now you'll notice our text never shifted. Did you notice that? Again, if I do it on desktop, you'll see that flash of unstyled text no longer exists. Okay. So this is what typography 2.0 does for Shoptimizer. And what's happening is we're using, it's a, a brand new module we've built. Um, and what's happening is it preloads 
the WAF files directly here at the top of the page, okay? Um, so we're no longer, so these are Google fonts, okay? These are Google fonts uh, that you would, that you all know and love. But what happens is the Google fonts are actually downloaded from the Google servers and they're stored uh, on your server. So we're not relying on those third party requests to Google servers for typography anymore. And yeah, you can see the full Google font list is here. And not only that, um, that in of itself isn't too innovative, but the uh, automatic preloading of those WAF files is what's new. Okay, and then we're also now using, um, we've added just for any of the CSS nerds in the house is we're also then using, you can see here, um, so the font category is also loaded and we're using display swap as the default. Um, uh, let's see here now, let's have a look. Uh, where's it going? Oh, it's probably set globally. Yeah, we're using display swap as the, as the text substitution method. So those two changes, or those three changes, that solves that problem. Now, there's one caveat to this change, is you do have a bit of a struggle between, or a struggle, there's a bit of a conflict between two of our core web vitals. So you'll always, let me just clear our caches here. We'll just explain that a little bit more. And breeze, get rid of it warm it up uh, okay oh yeah we have a it's incognito okay she's, that's warmed up now and let's kick off our test again we're not going to beat this spoiler if we're not going to beat 98 that's that's pretty damn good as it is but let's go through the motions um so Whereas the conflict between largest contentful paint and CLS. So when we, to solve any of the flash of unstyled text issues, we end up preloading in here. Let's have a look at our waterfall. We end up preloading our WAFs right at the top. Okay. And this is one of the dangers of preloading. So it's a good example to show you. So we've got four WAFs here, which is quite a lot, right? In the future, we should be able to get that down to maybe one or maybe two. Right now, there's four WAF files being loaded based on the typography settings that are chosen in the customizer. But you can see by preloading those WAF files, they're loaded very early in the waterfall. And you can see what they're doing, right? They're actually stopping the browser from getting to our CSS files. Right? which is a big problem in the grand scheme of things because you're slowing down the rendering and you're slowing down the main thread. So in order to have that wonderful benefit of seeing no flash of unstyled text, you have to preload your fonts, your WAF files before your style sheets. So it's really up to you as to whether you want this or not. Personally, I have no problem with flash of unstyled text as long as it's not causing CLS issues. If it starts starts to cause CLS issues, and this will depend on your own site, then have preloading them can make sense. But if you want to live without them, if you want to live with that flash of unstyled text and it's not causing you CLS issues, then I would be in favor of not preloading um, your your WAF files. So really it's going to depend on the site site by site basis but you'll see now in our test what's happened is okay so again we're not you know 95 98 still pretty good now you'll see our largest contentful paint drifted out right to 2.6 seconds but you can see that very very residual cls value that was hitting us on mobile is now gone right and that's because there was a very very small amount of um layout shift happening with the text substitution that happens when the site's loaded. So you kind of almost have to pick your battle and choose choose your poison here as to which is hurting you more. Um, and you'll see, look, you know, desktop at this point is kind of irrelevant. We've been um, hitting pretty good scores for quite some time now and they, they wouldn't really change with something as insignificant as this. But certainly here, those additional WAFs do slow down the largest contentful paint because they're blocking. Okay, so you will have to choose what's more important to you. You'll see, depending on your font, cho your font choice, 
it you may say a bigger CLF you may see a bigger CLS shift which would start to hurt the score. So you might get away with you know activating maybe just one WAF file and it keeps your you keeps your LTP under two point five and solves this. So it will really depend on your individual um, installation. But I'm going to run this again, right? Because you know we said we only ran it. We need to run it two or three times. But let's see what happens again. Like I said, I wouldn't be. I knew we weren't going to hit the ninety eights. Um, but we might get back to 95 or sorry, we might get to 2.5. Yeah. So right, look, we're just on the cusp now. You can start to see it's going amber because we've just at the 2.5, but you know, it's again, it's up to you. I'm going to leave it on right now because I'm happy enough. We're at 2.5, um, just about, and there's probably a few other tweaks we could do. Um, but we're, at this point we're at diminishing returns. Okay. Um, again, we could tweak this image, make it a bit smaller. Um, Oh yeah, it was one thing we did forget to do, which was to preload the logo. Did we preload the logo? Apologies if I'm repeating myself. I just want to make sure we cover everything. I know we excluded it from lazy load, but I don't know if we preloaded it because we definitely want to do that. No, we didn't. And the reason why we didn't is because we didn't have Jetpack active yet. And what you need to do when you're preloading your logo, you need to grab the full URL to the logo. This logo name is not good enough. So in this instance, it's being loaded from Jetpack. So what you do is just grab the URL, bring it in here, and save. Now, with preloading, similarly to the WAFs, you need to be very, very careful as um, oh, that's what it says here, to be used sparingly. Because every single time you preload, a request it's going to be happening very early in that render tree on the website okay so only only preload assets that are key to above the fold on the page okay don't be preloading something that's appearing much further down the uh the viewport has no value okay so that might now actually get the uh that might help just because uh, it's so far up the uh, chain that might just get that squeeze another percentage point off that and we can have our cake and eat it so to speak there you go so we're at 97 and 2.3 so just that little tweak helped get us back over the um, thing I'm actually surprised um, that we're seeing this one I actually thought that we had moved uh, the um, I know this is just expires and the assets set to 30 days by default. I mean, that's that's a, that's an easy fix. That's not nothing really to do with Core Web Vitals or Lighthouse. That's just setting expires on the server. But typically, what I quick fix for that is just to ensure those assets are loaded from Jetpack, which I thought we'd activated just for all assets. Perhaps we did not. Yeah, uh, it should it should actually be loading static files from its CDN too. Um, but we have other. Uh, we have another one of our old guides covers the expires uh, codes that you need to add for that. So I'm not going to do it now. And to be honest with you, it's not really needed. Uh, it doesn't affect, as you can see, these are more diagnostics. They don't have a direct impact on your GPSI scores or on your core web vitals. So while I would do them, um, I'm not going to do them on this video now, but I would definitely do them just to just to remove them from your diagnostics. Um, but they're not needed. They won't influence this number in any way, shape, or form. So now, one final point. So you've probably seen, if you've paid any attention to, you know, some other, um, some of the Facebook groups and some of the blog posts that are going around the house at the moment about Elementor uh, and Gutenberg and whether everyone now suddenly needs to stop building websites in Elementor to achieve um, high PageSpeed Insight scores and core levels. You don't, right? So the page that we've shown you here, the home page. Let me just refresh. That was the original load for it. This home page is built in Elementor. Okay. So... I think um, this is way for it to load. So you can see here, right? There's a hero, feature products, pulling in WooCommerce short codes. 
all done in Elementor. And yet, we're hitting these scores. Yes, there's still lots of evidence that Elementor is here. Right, we've quite a lot of, these are almost exclusively all Elementor JavaScript files. Um, but look, we're hitting pretty good scores, even with a page builder. Yeah, we're up to 97 out of 100 now on mobile and 100 out of 100. And that's with Elementor. So it doesn't come out of the box. You've got to do the work. You've got to go through. You've got to find the assets that are... Um, you've got to see which assets you can exclude from asset cleanup. You've got to see which ones can be delayed. So there is work to this. But look, it doesn't matter which page builder you're using. If you use Elementor irresponsibly and start adding loads of elements to your home page, it's going to be slow. The same goes for Beaver Builder. The same goes for Gutenberg. It doesn't matter which editor you use. It's a tool that needs to be used responsibly. Don't overload your pages with lots of artifacts because the page building device is just a distribution mechanism for whatever content and um, things that you add to your page. So if you're going to add lots of interactive elements to a page, it will slow down the main thread and it will affect your scores does gutenberg is gutenberg lighter by default default absolutely it is for sure you'll find that gutenberg is much clever and much better at not loading this kind of stuff all right that's for sure and we could probably spend more time if we wanted to be on this video all day probably excluding a lot more of these assets and we'd probably even further improve on some of our TBT here, certainly on our time to interactive, but we're looking pretty good as it is right now. So I'm going to stop. And that's the other thing with, with page speed optimization is you can literally, you're never done, right? You can always, you know, core web vitals will continue to change and evolve over time. So what a, what's good today might be good in six months time. Um, and I'm sure Google will evolve uh, what aspects of for example, the Lighthouse, we're at 7.1 now, 6.3, which was the previous version, which had the HTTP 1.1 bug. Something might change in Lighthouse next week, which throws these scores off and we need to start again. That's just part and parcel of the the whole web performance optimization um, game. It's in a constant state of flux. But we're now, I think in 2021, um, I think the fact that Google has shone so much attention on web site performance is a great thing because for the longest time um, lots of websites didn't give uh, proper consideration to uh, website performance it was an afterthought that's so so important for hundreds of reasons but for you from a business perspective it helps with conversion that's for sure there's countless state case studies which we've covered before uh, which show the benefits of a fast website from a conversion perspective um, yeah, so, you know, that really, I suppose, concludes the main uh, activities of today's video. So I'll throw up over to you guys to see how you get on with optimizing your WooCommerce sites. Um, if you hit any issues or any problems with any of the steps I've taken, drop me a note in the comments below or shoot me an email. Um, head over to commercegurus.com and check out Shoptimizer if you've not done it before. I'll leave some links uh, to some uh, some key documents uh, and some of the some of the resources that we've used uh, in this video today. So yeah, happy hunting and good luck getting your core web vital scores kicked into shape before May 21. Thank you.